Dr. Tusek here. Um, I wanted to just take a few minutes to let you all know about a scan that is available for the first time that I think is an absolute game changer in medicine in general, uh, preventative cardiology in particular, and that's the Clearly Heart Scan. And I wanna spend a minute kind of unpacking why that is so, why it's such an important innovation that we've been waiting for for a long, long, long time. So if we first back it up and we ask, how does the heart go bad? How can uh, heart disease prevent? I mean, it's in three general basic categories. The first is you can have an electrical disturbance with your heart. That means that the conduction system uh, that conveys the impulse from the pacemaker cells throughout the entire heart muscle is somehow disrupted. And that's called an arrhythmia. You know, atrial fibrillation is one of the most common uh, arrhythmias. There are numerous others, and that can be detected with an EKG or a remote EKG sensor, like an Alive Core app or even an Apple Watch. The second is structural heart problems. Those are problems that occur with the anatomy of the heart. Uh, they could be a leaky valve or one of the chambers can be a little too thin or too thick to optimize uh, the functioning capacity uh, of the pump itself uh, of the heart. And that can be detected with an echocardiogram. So that's an ultrasound of the heart. And then the third, <clears throat> which is the leading killer to this day uh, in the United States and, and most other industrialized countries, is a vascular heart problem, right? The uh, interruption of blood flow through the coronary arteries to supply oxygen to the heart muscle itself. And so um, that's um, how a heart, a heart attack uh, occurs. And what we're really talking about here um, when we're trying to address uh, early detection and prevention of the leading killer of our population heart attacks, uh, we're trying to uh, figure out uh, a really reliable and effective way to identify people who are at risk for that condition as early as possible. And the reason, one of the main reasons being is that it's, it's still considered a silent killer, right? Uh, somewhere around 50% of heart attacks occur as the first symptom. So before you have any other symptoms, um, the initial onset or the initial presentation of your heart disease is actually a myocardial infarction or heart attack, right? So many people don't really have a lot of preliminary signs and symptoms uh, that you're all aware of. Chest pain radiating, particularly down the left arm or up, up the jaw, uh, and sometimes it presents with abdominal pain and pressure elsewhere, uh, it's not classical. And so, <clears throat> A, many times the first symptom is actually a heart attack. B, oftentimes the symptoms are not classic. Uh, and that's particularly the case in women. So, all of this to say that how can it be that we have really not been successful as a medical community, as a medical system, in lowering the incidence of this leading cause of death. And the reason is simple. Um, we haven't had really effective tools to, to identify the people that are at most risk early, right? And so the, the tools that we've had for the last number of decades uh, include stress tests, which are treadmill stress tests that may or may not include a nuclear dye. Uh, it's called a perfusion scan. Um, and coronary artery calcium scans. Uh, these are um, the EBCT scans that, that many of our patients have had, which we still recommend and, and, and I think have, a, have an important role. But, uh, you know, there's two problems with both of those uh, kind of conventional screening tools. 
The first one is that uh, the nuclear stress test is just notoriously unreliable. Um, you know, the number of patients uh, that I've heard of or known about um, throughout my career that have had a clean bill of health, you know, with a nuclear stress test only to suffer a heart attack uh, weeks or months later is, is literally too numerous to count. Um, and in terms of the coronary artery uh, heart plaque scan or the coronary calcium scan, which again, I think is a, is a great tool, but the main issue with that is it's only measuring one kind of plaque, right? It's only measuring the degree of plaque that is calcified. So it's measuring hard plaque, coronary plaque that's calcified. That's why it's oftentimes called a calcium score. And it turns out that the body's intelligence uses the calcification of coronary plaque as a buttressing or a scaffolding mechanism that protects that plaque from rupturing. And it's the plaque rupture that leads to the heart attack. So what we're really trying to do in terms of coronary artery disease prevention, ultimately, is to stabilize plaque and prevent it from rupturing, i.e. causing a heart attack. And now I just said, well, the hard plaque is kind of a shell or a coating that the body creates to stabilize that plaque and, and protect it from rupturing. And so it's indeed the case that the coronary artery calcium scan is measuring the very plaque that is the most stable, right? And I think that's a generalization that more or less we can say is pretty accurate. And what we would ultimately really like to see, which up until very recently hasn't been possible, is the, the versions of coronary artery plaque that are not calcified, i.e. their soft plaque, and specifically the soft plaque that is the low density soft plaque. That's the most vulnerable of all. And so that's what we would really like to identify as early as possible. And, um, you know, that is identifiable in people as early as in their 30s. And so, uh, for the first time, uh, again, thanks to this uh, absolutely, I think, game-changing technology, we can do that with great precision now. Uh, this test not only tells you what kind of plaque you have and exactly where it is in your coronary artery system and uh, the specific density of that plaque, it also gives you lots of other insights related to the remodeling index and other pretty technical details of sort of the, the risk or the danger of, um, or the, the potential threat of having a heart attack in the, um, you know, in the near or uh, near term future. So, so the, the tool I think is something that everybody needs to know about. Uh, I think the tool is, and, and again, I'm calling, I'm talking about the clearly scan here in particular, is, is not the easiest thing to do. Uh, there's some technicalities that are, uh, that are important that I'll go over quickly. And it's not a very cheap test. So all in, it's about $1,600 to do a clearly scan. And in general, it's a two-step process if you want to do it here in Boulder County. Uh, Boulder Community Hospital does the first component of that for us, which is a CT angiogram. So that's a coronary artery dye test. You get an IV in your arm, they push a dye that illuminates the coronary arteries. And uh, with that, uh, usually a day or so later, Boulder Community Hospital will burn a CD for you that you then have to pick up. Bring that CD to our office where we'll upload it to this AI-based platform called Clearly. And uh, usually once we do that, only in a matter of days, we'll get that report. Uh, and then we can go over it in, in great detail. Um, the cost of the coronary CT scan is in the $800 range. 
which is about the ballpark for the clearly scan itself. So it's those two charges. Now there is an option to do it all at once. Uh, in Denver, there is a facility called Simon Med, and uh, I believe the price is, is very comparable. Uh, it might be slightly more expensive, but uh, they will also do it for you. And you don't have to bring the CD in because they'll up, upload it on site. So those are the two options. We can do it here in, in Boulder County, or you could do it in Denver. Um, once we have that, we will want to also look at, particularly for the folks that have um, elevated uh, detection of vulnerable plaque, we'll want to corroborate that with the upstream um, risk factors, which are really all the things that are flowing through the bloodstream right, that are causing plaque in the first place. And we've gotten a lot better at that too uh, in the recent years. Uh, specifically, we're now aware that, you know, just looking at the conventional or traditional um, lipid panels, which include triglycerides, LDL, HDL, and total cholesterol is totally inadequate. Even for people that have high LDL, quote unquote, bad cholesterol, we now know that um, many forms of LDL are actually not that bad, and other forms are, are far more uh, concerning and aggressive. And that has to do more with the particle density, the particle sizes of LDL, as well as the particle numbers. So these are all things that we can now test with uh, the advanced lipid panel that we offer. So uh, the, the bottom line is if you really wanna understand what's going on with your heart, from a vascular perspective, we now have these, these new uh, amazing tools, including the Clearly Scan that gives you the anatomy of the coronary system, as well as the advanced lipid panel that really helps you understand uh, the backstory of, of risk of uh, plaque accumulation and propagation. So I hope this was a helpful brief overview and a brief intro. I encourage you to watch uh, the Rich Roll podcast uh, of, uh, that is below here uh, on the next link uh, that features Tim O'Donnell and his incredible story. Um, and I wish you all lots of great health. Talk to you soon.